From the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, this is Studio One. Hi everyone and welcome to Studio One. I'm Kari Strandberg. And I'm Avery Robb. Today on the show, many students study journalism each year in hopes of scoring a reporter job on the national stage. We'll talk to someone who has been there and now teaches students how to be successful in the field. Also, a new Gallup poll finds obesity has reached another record high in the U.S. Learn how you can take steps towards a healthier lifestyle without going to the gym. But first, Apple is fighting a court order ruling that they helped the FBI hack into the phone of one of the San Bernardino shooters. Protesters gathered in front of an Apple store in San Francisco. The FBI hasn't been able to unlock the shooter's iPhone without risking losing all of the information. This is due to a security feature that wipes all the information from the phone after 10 failed passcode attempts. The FBI is asking Apple to disable the security feature to allow them to crack the code. CEO Tim Cook called this a dangerous precedent with serious implications for future privacy. Firefighters saved two dogs from a burning house in Duluth, Minnesota. Police say a neighbor called in a fire and alerted them about pets inside the home. Rescuers gave oxygen to one that was found unconscious from smoke inhalation. The homeowners decided to take both pups to the vet to get checked out. No one was in the home at the time of the fire. You might not believe lying in bed for weeks at a time would be of any scientific importance, but one NASA researcher would disagree. Renita Cromwell recently spoke to a group of UND space study students. She covered different types of field experiments NASA uses to study the effects of space exploration. One is a bed rest study that creates a similar physiologic effect on a person here on Earth as they would experience in space. It's important because not all research can be done in space and we need to prepare for longer duration missions. So we will look to develop countermeasures on the ground so that they'll be ready to fly when they're needed. The current focus at NASA is working with the German Space Agency to study visual impairments in astronauts. This is one of the many applications of the bed rest study. Sometimes a warning can keep us away from an unhealthy choice. A new study shows it could steer parents away from the sweetest drinks. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania made sugar warning labels and attached them to beverages. They then showed the drinks to a group of parents who saw either no labels or one of three different warnings. The warnings alerted them that the added sugar contributes to obesity, diabetes, and tooth decay. Parents who saw the labels were on average 20% less likely to choose a sugar drink for their kids. When given the choice to take the stairs or use an elevator, many Americans are choosing the less labor-intensive option. This decision is only adding to the national weight scale. Caitlin Wrights is a busy sophomore at UND, but between classes, there's another priority she fits in her schedule. I usually do every day, unless I, like last semester on Thursdays I had class like all day so I didn't go but then I'd go on like Saturday or something. However, hitting the gym isn't on many people's to-do list. Yeah, about two-thirds of American adults are what we consider to be overweight and or obese and about a third of American adults are obese. Health researcher Grant Tompkinson says an answer to fixing this problem is physical activity but it's not the intense workout you may think of at first. We're encouraging that light to moderate physical activity that leaves you somewhat to substantially tired, but you need to get it throughout your day. Right? So household, household chores, you know, doing a little bit of gardening, taking the rubbish out. The more health conscious decision is becoming more difficult to make as technology grows. The US government recommends no more than two hours of electronic screen time beyond work or school. Tomkinson suggests combining low-tech activities with high-tech and pursuing things you love. What we found was the hook. We found the hook to get them involved in physical activity. We found what they liked. And now they were more willing to try other activities because they felt empowered. They felt really confident. It helps like, not only with like, being healthy and stuff, it also helps with your mind. So you can clear your mind and like, just completely wipe everything. It's with one step at a time that many may choose to move on to the path of health. I'm Taylor Nelson, reporting for Studio One. The U.S. government suggests 60 minutes a day of moderate to vigorous activity. However, Tompkinson points out that this may be taken in smaller increments throughout the day. 
That's the news for now, Kari. Thanks, Avery. Let's go now to Kayla Lucky for the weather news. Kayla? Thanks, Kari. Here at the Weather Studio, we're taking a look at two of the most popular vacation spots, California and Florida. Down in Florida, they experienced an EF3 tornado this week as it had over 152 mile per hour wings in Century, Florida. The tornado lasted almost 17 miles and caused damage to numerous cars and buildings. Luckily, there were no fatalities reported. Meanwhile, in California, people were soaking up the sun and having a great time on the local beaches as they've been experiencing record-breaking highs temperatures throughout the week. The temperatures reached as high as the mid-80s along the coast and the summer-like heat spell is, continued, is about to continue for the rest of the week. Now, while they have been seeing all that sun, it can be a bad thing as they are experiencing a drought right now. And this is partly due to the jet stream and the California Ridge. Now, the jet stream goes from the west to the east and it has these ridges and these troughs. Now we're going to look at the California Ridge, which is located here, and that brings in sunnier conditions and drier weather into California, which is aiding that drought that they're seeing. As we look at the drought monitor for six months back, we can see how that ridge is affecting the drought and bringing in those extreme conditions. As we look back to a month ago, we can see how in Washington and Oregon, they're starting to see some relief out there. And that is because that drought or that ridge is starting to break down, which is actually bringing rain into that region. However, California, it doesn't look too good for you and you could be seeing some uh, drought for a little while longer. Now, as everyone remembers waking up to frost in the morning, and there is a reason why this delicate phenomenon is occurring. Every once in a while, in the dead of winter, Mother Nature gives us something beautiful. Like all the trees are completely white and it, it makes for really good photography and it's, it's basically like living in a little winter wonderland. He's talking about frost, which he says forms when there's water in the air and freezing temperatures. So you'll see frost on the ground if it's cold enough then you also see it on objects like trees and, uh, and cars. He also says there are different types of frost, the first being hoar frost. You can get these really neat patterns that basically come out from the objects and so it's very delicate so if you touch it it will fall off but like when you see all the trees covered in white that's usually what's happening. The other type is rime frost. And so in freezing fog we actually have water in there, little tiny cloud droplets at ground level. It's common with rime frost to see only one side of a tree covered. Hoar frost will cover an entire object. One of Aaron's favorite frost memories is from a snowmobile race. I was just out in the country and it was very serene because the winds were still and you could see the fresh traction, the snow from the animals and it was just serene and peaceful. Next time you find yourself in a winter wonderland, you'll know there might be more than one type of frost at work. Reporting for Studio One, I'm Phoebe Eichhorst. Now when that frost, when the sun comes up, that frost is all gone, so it's important to go out and enjoy it while you can. And that brings us to our weather question of the week. What was the costliest drought in U.S. history? And those years range from 850 to 1090 and from 2001 to 2003. And Kari, you might be wondering why we know that there is a drought in 850, and that is actually due to scientists taking a look at ice cores and tree rings. Wow, that's unbelievable that they can go back that far. Thanks, Kayla. Let's head on over now to Avery for the sports story of today's show. Avery? Thanks, Kari. North Dakota is known for its cold winters, but one group of youngsters in Grand Forks braved the chill at a local watering hole and reeled in some useful skills. Many of today's children spend a majority of their time indoors, occupying themselves with television and video games. Cabela's fishing expert Brad Olson wants to help change that. Oh, it's very important nowadays with all the electronics that are easily in their fingertips. It's a great opportunity to get the kids out and enjoy the outdoors. Cabela's, along with a number of other local sponsors, have made it their mission to get the area youth exposed to nature by holding the first annual Cabela's on Ice. Yeah. <laughs> well, we See it? Oh, there's it. the bottom. There it is. There's your kind jig. The oh, there's a the fish. Today here on Ryan Lake, kids got to learn the importance of being outdoors. And what one kid told me, they learned patience. 30 kids got the opportunity to spend a day with their parents learning the ins and outs of ice fishing while getting the chance to catch a bluegill or a rainbow trout. Nice view from the hill uh, of the pond here. So, uh, no, I thought it'd be nice that the girls get exposed to some ice fishing. That's the old-fashioned way of looking for fish. Look down the hole. <laughs> a lot of parents are busy with work and don't always have the time, so it's a great opportunity to get them involved. With a total of 10 fish on the line and a net full of memories, 
these kids landed a successful day on the lake. This is Jake Larson reporting for Studio One. Cabela's supplied all of the fishing gear and bait for the young anglers, as well as hot chocolate for the parents who tagged along. All the fish caught were released back into the lake. That's the sports story for today's show, Kari. What a great day to be out on the lake. Yeah, it's great that they got all those kids outdoors. Yes. Thanks, Avery. Some people are natural storytellers. Others may need some guidance. Next, we'll meet a professional storyteller who is teaching others his ways. Closed captioning for Studio One is underwritten in part by NDAD, helping others to help themselves. For me to go to college, it was, it was a big step knowing that I'm pursuing a better future for myself. When you know that you have a small system there that you can still find comfort in, it really makes a difference. The support here and everything that they offer for us, you know, the tutors, the free meals, the family, the friends, basically just somewhere for you to relax and be comfortable and find that home feeling again. Yeah, uh, okay, science meets imagination. Life changed by innovation to the future of our nation. Engineers the occupation. UND College of Engineering and Minds, invest in your mind to stay with the times. Formulas, machines, and all that's in between. They teach it all from wall to wall to help you succeed. Come on, it could be electrical, chemical, or civil. Our world-class staff will help you make it all official. Mechanical, petroleum, geology, a line at the, the UND's College of Engineering and Minds. Okay, become a leader, prove yourself among all your peers. Changing the world begins right here. You're not alone, but in the plan, we'll take your hand and help you stand with mentorship and advising. We'll do all we can. Okay, so if you want to join the party, simply calculate. The math adds up, so never think to hesitate. Education, leadership, and dreams combine at the UND College of Engineering and Minds. I really love UND. It's just exactly what I want to be doing, and you know, with this program, I, I get to do it. It's very tailored to what your interests are and what your future goals are. By the time I graduate, I'll have a, a stacked resume. This grad program has been unbelievable. It has literally been a dream come true. With more than 120 degree and certificate programs, the UND School of Graduate Studies is your path to success. Closed captioning for Studio One is supported in part by the Listen Center, enriching the lives of people who have intellectual disabilities with choices in community recreation. Many reporters dream of telling stories for a national news organization. The hard part is learning how to get from a local affiliate to the big leagues. Former PBS frontline reporter Mark Trahan is here to tell us about his journey in the media world. Thanks for being on the show with us today. I'm glad to be here. So I heard that you started reporting in your teens. What did you start off doing? I started a uh, small newspaper in a, a tribal community, Fort Hall, Idaho, and uh, uh, couldn't find a real job after that. And so you did some reporting for PBS's Frontline series as well. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. I've uh, worked on Frontline a couple of times. The most recent was a pretty tough story involving sexual abuse in Alaska. And uh, it was actually a story that was so complicated I wasn't sure I wanted to do. But uh, as I got into the reporting side of it, realized that it was a phenomenal story and I wanted to tell it. And what was the most reporting or rewarding part about doing that story? The, the people involved, uh, the resilience, the ability to rise above the challenges they faced growing up. And you also had a blog that you have that's free to the media. What is the purpose of that? I decided that nobody was covering um, American Indians in elections and uh, decided to be really comprehensive about it. And uh, uh, actually, I started off with health reporting during the health care reform debate. And it's kind of just uh, become more about elections. Um, Really, it's an all-purpose site that has everything from um, elections to county commission to state legislatures to uh, Congress. And how do you think that the evolution of technology has changed the journalism field? Oh, it's changing everything every day. It's like an entirely different um, world. I expected when my career began to be entirely a newspaper editor and never expected I would be doing television. And 
the opportunities for a young person now are greater than ever because uh, things are being invented. There's uh, news media companies that didn't exist five years ago that are out hiring people saying, astonish us. And how did you transition from being a reporter now to teaching? I've been doing it a little bit for a while and uh, I always continue to practice reporting so I stay pretty current. Um, I think I try to just be open and to talk to students about how this is such a great time of opportunity and to uh, be prepared for it. And how important do you think it is that you had so many experiences that you can share with your students? Oh, I think that's invaluable. Uh, for one thing, I've made some doozies of mistakes over the years and uh, because I can relate to those mistakes, perhaps save a student one or two along the way. <laughs> and you've also been doing reporting while you're teaching this semester. That has to be a lot. How are you juggling that? I get up early. Um, I think it's important to stay current and um, uh, to try to show students as well as yourself that uh, you're not just teaching this stuff, that you're actually practicing it. And uh, writing is something that's a muscle that needs to be exercised. You can't just do it one day and then go away for a while. You have to keep at it. What's your favorite part about teaching? Probably uh, surprising people with stories they didn't know and uh, enlightening, the, enlightening uh, folks with ideas. And so what's, what's next for teaching your students with all these changes in technology and everything? What have you been doing lately? Well, the big one is uh, we'll be announcing the details very soon, but we're starting an indigenous news project um, involving students, Indigenous News Network. And our idea is that uh, there's not enough native students at North Dakota to pull off a major news operation. So why not broaden it and include native students from entire country? And uh, so we'll actually be hiring freelancers and we've got two editors working now and soon we'll have a product to show. And so what are some of the bigger lessons you need to give students so that they're ready for that? Be open to technology and how it's changing the field dramatically. Um, it used to be that uh, you would need a, a satellite truck and some really sophisticated uh, equipment to tell a story live. Now you can pull out a cell phone as Studio One did a few minutes ago with a periscope. Uh, the opportunity to tell stories, dramatic stories, powerful stories with very little uh, expensive technology is a whole game changer. Uh, when I talk to students, many of them tell me they want to work at Vice News, they want to work at AJ Plus. They're seeing these new media operations and saying, this is the kind of storytelling I'd like to do. Can you give me a specific example that you've seen of how technology has changed recently in the media industry? Oh, sure. Um, the first one was going back to Frontline. The first time I did a Frontline, I had a full crew uh, we did everything by the book. After eight hours, we went into overtime and had very strict rules. Second time I did it, they just said, here are the um, parameters of the story. Here's a set amount. We don't care how you do it. Just deliver something. Um, then most recently, a, a couple of years ago, I did a story for the news hour. And um, we, we shot with one regular uh, portable camera, but we also shot with a DSLR. And as we're editing, I found we're using almost all the stuff from the DSLR. And it occurred to me that the technology has changed so much that you don't need the same tools you did before, that um, really it's more accessible. It's incredible how well all that's been going with technology lately. Thanks for being on the show with us today, Mark. Glad to do it. Wild game can be a detectable dish to serve at any platter. Coming up, we'll, we'll see why one small town is using the benefits of hunting season to bring the community together. of the woman in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the woman.
North Dakota is facing challenges in healthcare delivery. The University of North Dakota School of Medicine and Health Sciences is building a place to help meet the state's healthcare needs. In addition to a new structure, we're also building interaction between healthcare professionals while building a workforce through expanding class sizes. We're inspiring our youth to engage in healthcare careers and exploring ways to reduce disease. It starts here and ends here, building a better future for North Dakota. I really admire the faculty. They're the ones that kind of helped push me through this. Courses are hands-on and interactive. The communication program has so many different facets to it. One of the great things about the staff um, in the communication department is that they love what they do. They encourage you to really critically think and analyze everything you're learning. They just, they're so into it and it makes you want to be into it. To have the future you want and a career you'll be proud of, you'll need a great education. The University of North Dakota can get you there with more than 225 degree programs, preparing you for today's fastest growing high demand careers like medicine and health professions, aerospace, business, engineering, and energy. Schedule your campus visit today at und.edu slash go. Because to succeed, you need to be exceptional. If you would like to attend a live show, go to our website at studio1.und.edu. The 1930s were a tense time on a global scale as World War II was unfolding. The 1936 Olympics was a highly publicized spectacle. Countries used their athletes to showcase their nation's strength. The movie Race is based on the true story of Jesse Owens, an African-American runner. He's brought to international attention for his participation in the Olympics in Berlin, Germany. Owens faces Adolf Hitler's vision of Aryan supremacy as he strives for international domination. Being a track athlete um, is one thing, but you know, being a track athlete in 1936 is a whole nother thing. You know, they didn't have uh, the benefit of you know the type of shoes we have and the type of training. During the production of the screenplay, writers tried to focus on the most eventful years of the legendary runner's life. They began at the age of 19 when he first arrived at Ohio State University and ended with his triumphant run two years later on the world stage. Race is released February 19th with a PG-13 rating. The FAA is trying to hold UAS owners more accountable for safety in the air. Now, all owners of drones between half a pound to 55 pounds must register them online. The goal of this mandatory registration is to find those who misuse drones and to increase safety overall. We wanted your thoughts on whether mandatory drone registration will help reduce illegal or unsafe usage. It will stop the honest people. There are always going to be some people that are going to do it illegally no matter what. Yes, I think registering them would uh, reduce the risk of injuring people or planes and stuff like that. I don't really know. I don't think so. People are going to do what they're going to do with them and I don't know how much harm can be done with the ones that they sell right now anyway. Well, I don't know how you're going to control how they use it by having it registered. That doesn't make any sense really. It would have to be looked at as far as for safety reasons as opposed to maybe people's rights or liberties as, as far as wanting to use them. I don't know if it will stop them. Um, but it probably will make it more difficult for them to use them illegally. A comment on Facebook from Austin in Wilmer, Minnesota. I still think the uneducated public that owns them will do whatever they want until caught. Instead of registration to fix the problem, I think they need to focus more on educating users. And from Dan in Manassas, Virginia, registration would prevent air traffic control and airport management from having to deal with unknown pop-up UAS traffic and it would prevent any illegal activity from occurring as they would be required to file UAS flight plans. Culture, customs, and cuisine all make up the heritage found in cities and communities. One small town uses an annual cook-off to showcase theirs. And they've already started all these five batches. Back in the winter of 1986, in the midst of deer season, competition arose between Chris Michalik and his buddies. Just about tired with you guys. But it wasn't about the best set of antlers. Guys thought that their sausage was the best. So we said, okay, Friday night we'll get some guys together and we'll have some judges and we'll see who makes the best sausage. 
That contest grew into what is now the Minto Bologna Cook-Off. The event has grown over its 30 years, and so has the competition. These guys are really particular of making their sausage. And, and, and it sort of gives us a reason to get together and, like I said, brag or pick on each other or whatever. You won't find this kind of bologna pre-packed in the deli aisle. This fresh, homemade meat comes in a variety, from beef to bison to elk. Competitors bring in two rolls of their best bologna, one for the contest and the other for the community to eat. I'm just thinking of my boy for a couple years, he didn't want to make bologna or do anything else. Now the last couple years he's got into it. And I keep my recipes and everything so it sort of pass it on. With over 140 entries, the judges can only select one winner. We didn't like that, it was a little bit dry. But at the end of the night, so it's not the amount of entries, but the support for the community that means the most. Without doing fundraisers like this, I mean, our girls wouldn't get half the chances and opportunities that they do get. The entry fee for each bologna submitted goes directly to the Minto Girl Scouts. Parent volunteers and troop leaders put in over a month's worth of preparation for the event. It's a great feeling to give back. I hope other people can see it. And um, I've been in the business now for 30 years, and I hope when I uh, retire, somebody else will take it on and, and keep the tradition going. A tradition that has people coming back for more than just the bologna. I'm Jake Aachen, reporting for Studio One. The money raised helps fund different projects and trips for the troops. Last year, the Minto Girl Scouts were able to make and donate crafts, baskets, and cards for the veterans at the VA hospital. Kari, it's cool to see the competitive side, but it's also nice to see them take it a step further and this, this donating the money to the girls. I think it's great that that event benefits more than one group, too. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Avery. Now let's show in Kayla for the final look at the weather. Kayla? Thanks, Kari. As we look at the temperatures for the week in the West Coast, it's going to stay pretty warm in our region, or out west. And they in, in California, they could be seeing some record-breaking temperatures again this week. However, it's going to stay pretty chilly down in places like Florida, and they could hit lows in the mid-40s. As we go into precipitation for the week, much of the United States is going to stay drier. However, on the East Coast, they could be seeing some snow, and down South, we could see some rain. And that brings us to our weather question of the week, and that answer is actually C, the drought of 1987 to 1989. Now, Kari, it costs almost $40 billion. Thanks, Kayla. And that's our show for today. As always, you can follow us through social media or get more information on our website. From all of us at Studio One, have a great week.